Hello there, everybody. We're back again. Today we're talking about Global Shell using HP Server Automation, the premier end-to-end lifecycle management tool for servers in the data center. I want to open up the uh, Server Automation client, quickly log in. Now, for those of you who have never heard of the Global Shell, it probably is one of the coolest features in data center automation and is not available in any other platform. The Global Shell is a single bash-like shell that gives you access to your entire managed server infrastructure. So for those who are technical and, and want to see this right away, let me just show you this, and you, you, you'll be very impressed. So I, again, I just went under Tools, said Global Shell. I can also go to any particular server. Let's say... Um, well, uh, and you can access both Windows and Unix. All access to Unix-based servers is monitored. So let's just uh, right-click on this guy, and I can show you that I can uh, open the remote terminal to that guy. But again, going back to our global shell, which is already open over here, I'm now sitting at the root level of this global shell. And so far, you're thinking it's just a shell. Yes, however, under this very special, beautiful path, OPSW, you start seeing something that's different here. The hierarchy of this shell follows the model defined by the, the, the FAT Java interface. So, for instance, let's say I would like to see the file system of a server. So, I can go under server. And under server, I can follow the tree as I would through a search by service level, by operating system, by customer. In this case, I'm just going to go to the add sign, which gives me all the servers. There they are. So if I, for instance, would like to copy a file, let's just browse the file system, if you will. Now, remember, this is a pseudo shell running over top of server automation Reaching back to the agent that's running on that box, the other videos that I've built, I created some Windows boxes, and I'm going to access their files using a Unix bash shell. So uh, the Win3PF is a Windows 2008 64-bit R2 box. Let's go there. VVM dash Win3 dash PF. And this pseudo folder gives me a lot of information about the server. For instance, I can take a look at the custom attributes defined for that server. Well, I don't have any. Uh, let's take a look quickly at, uh, let's see, info. And that's the information that I have defined about that server. It's a virtual file, if you will. It's not a physical file on this, on this, on this system. It's 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 created dynamically based on the information that the server knows about this box. It tells you the agent version, the MAC address, the last time you registered with the server, the IP address, and so on. Let's take take a look uh, take a look at its files. And here's something that's interesting. Uh, when you're going to browse the files of a, of a machine managed, you have to define which user are you going to use. Now, for simplicity's sake, I defined both of the primary user IDs created for most servers, which is administrator for Windows and root for Unix. But you can filter this down to make it a lot more fitting so that you only see the user ID that's valid for the particular machine. In this case, it is administrator, so I'm going to browse it. Oops. And there is my drive C on that file. Now, again, I am using a shell, Unix, bash, to browse a Windows file system. And let's go ahead and copy a file here. Um, let's copy... that file 
to my home folder. Let's browse my home folder. Now, this is, again, a virtual home folder. There it is. I copied that file from a Windows machine onto my virtual folder created by HPSA. Let's, let's go to a different server. And let's do the same operation. Let's browse the file system. Yeah. VVM Win, two, uh, win 8. There you go. So now I'm browsing two different file systems using the Global Shell using Bash. Okay, so that, that is what the Global Shell will do in a nutshell. It will allow you to not only browse not only file systems, but also information about managed servers, on top of which it allows you to run scripts. In a, a more advanced video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can run commands on these managed servers and get results back. So you could hypothetically run pretty complicated, pretty uh, extensive scripting technologies that allow you to, to make multiple servers interact. Let's say in the case of, you know, firing up a, an additional web server in a cluster and you want to run scripts under the two clusters or you want to run scripts on a load balancer, the base operating system of the target machine is uh, irrelevant, right? So you can hit these machines, you can run scripts against them, PowerShell, Bash, Corn Shell, whatever you want to run against the target machine, get results back. You can save these scripts either in a private folder of yours or a public folder that every admin can access. Okay, uh, there's also, I'm also going to do another advanced video on security audits and how you can see the, the outcome or and who's doing what against your Unix servers. The side note, I can, I can, because everything is in plain text, I can keep track of what everybody does to a Unix server. I can open remote terminal sessions to Windows machines, but due to the nature of that session, I cannot record it. That session is encrypted. There's nothing I can do about it. But on Unix machines, you can see everything. Okay, well, I hope that was helpful, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.